we're briefly going to be looking at representing equivalent ratios on the coordinate plane. Um, what we're going to do is take a look at this particular ratio of 6 to 4. 6 obviously is the numerator, 4 is the denominator. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look to see where does that get plotted on the coordinate plane. If you can see here, 6, 4 represented here, where 6, the numerator, is the x-coordinate, 4 is considered the y-coordinate, and the 4, if you recall, is in the denominator. So what's going to happen if we reveal another equivalent ratio? We have 12 to 8. Can you see that this is being multiplied by 2? 6 times 2 is 12, 4 times 2 is 8. As you can see, it's been plotted down here at a point of 12, 8, where 12 was the numerator, again, that's the x-coordinate, 8 is the denominator, and that is the y-coordinate. What will happen if we reveal a third equivalent ratio? 12 is the denominator, 18 is the numerator. What's happening here? 4 is now being multiplied by 3 to get to 12. 6 is being multiplied by 3 to get to 18. 18 is the x-coordinate, 12 is the y-coordinate. Do you see a pattern being established here? Let's take a look at one more. We now have a coordinate of 24, 16. 24 is the numerator, that is the x-coordinate. 16 is the y-coordinate, and that is in the denominator. And again, do you see a pattern being established here with equivalent ratios? Let's take a look at one more. If you've discovered that equivalent ratios always form a line going through the or origin, good for you, because that's exactly what it does. If you take a look at it, now the 6 is being multiplied by 5 to get to 30, 4 is being multiplied by 5 to get to 20, 30 is the x-coordinate, 20 is the y-coordinate, and so equivalent ratios will always form a line going through the origin because they are constant.